Hello and welcome to the Bible with Frisco 2023. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Frisco, and today we're going to be covering Job 22 through 24 and Acts 11. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. Eliphaz, Job 22. Then Eliphaz, the Temanite, replied, Can a man be of benefit to God? Can even a wise person benefit him? What pleasure would it give the Almighty if you were righteous? What would he gain? If your ways were blameless, it is for your pity that he rebukes you and brings charges against you. Is not your wickedness great? Are not your sins endless? You demanded security from your relatives for no reason. You stripped people of their clothing, leaving them naked. You gave no water to the weary and you withheld food from the hungry, though you were a powerful man owning land, an honored man living on it, and yet sent widows away empty-handed, and broke the strength of the fatherless. That is why snares are all around you, why sudden perils terrifies you, why it is so dark that you cannot see, and why a flood of water covers you. Is not God in the highest of heaven, and see how lofty are the heights and highest stars? And yet you say, what does God know? Does he judge through such darkness? Thick clouds veil him, and so he does not see us as he goes about in the vaulted heavens. Will you keep the old path the wicked have trod? They were carried off before their time, their foundations washed away by a flood. They said to God, Leave us alone. What can the Almighty do to us? Yet it was he who filled their houses with good things. So I stand aloft from the plains of the wicked. The righteous see their ruin and rejoice in innocent mock them, saying, Surely our foes are destroyed, and fire devours their wealth. Submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Accept instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove wickedness far from your tent and assign your nuggets to the dust, your gold or of ophir to the rocks and the ravines, then the Almighty will be your God, the choicest silver of your the choicest silver of you, surely then you will find delight in the Almighty, and will lift up your face to God. You will pray to Him, and He will hear you, and you will fulfill your vows. What you decide on will be done, and light will shine on your ways. When people are brought low, and you say, lift them up, then he will save the downcast. He will deliver even one who is not innocent, who will be delivered through the cleanliness of your hands. Job 23 Then Job replied, Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling, I would state my case before 
him and fill my mouth with arguments, I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he would say to me. Would he vigorously oppose me? No, he would not press charges against me. There the upright can establish their innocence before him, and there I would be delivered for forever from my judge. But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. But he stands alone, and who can oppose him? He does whatever he pleases. He carried, uh, he carries out his decrees against me, and many such plans he still has in store. That is why I am terrified before him. When I think of all this, I fear him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me, yet I am not silenced by the darkness, by the thick darkness that covers my face. Why does the Almighty not set times for judgment? Job 24 Why must those who know him look in vain for such days? There are those who move boundary stones. They prostrate flocks from they have stolen. They drive away the orphan's donkey and the widow's ox in pledge. They trust in needy from the path and force all poor of the land into hiding. Like wild donkeys in the desert, the poor go about their labor of foraging food. The wastelands provides food for their children. They gather fodder in the fields and glean in vineyards of the wicked. Lacking clothes, they spend the night naked. They have nothing to cover themselves in the fold. They are drenched by mountain rains and huge, they, and they hug the rocks for lack of shelter. The fatherless child is snatched from the breasts. The infant of the poor is seized for a de debt. Lacking in clothes, they go about naked. They carry the sh shaves, but still go hungry. They crush olives among the trenches, and they tread the weighing wine press, yet suffer thirst. The groans of the dying arise from the city, and the souls of the wounded cry out for help. But God charges no one with wrongdoing. There are those who rebel against the light, who do not know its ways, or say, or they stay in its paths. And when daylight is gone, the murderers rise up, chills the poor and needy, and in the night steals forth like a thief. The eyes of the adulterer watches for dusk. He thinks, no eye will see me, and he keeps his face concealed. In the dark, thieves break into houses, but by day they shut themselves in. They want nothing to do with the light. For all of them, midnight is their morning. They make friends with the terrors of darkness. And yet, they are from all the surface of the water. Their portion of the land is cursed, so that no one goes to the vineyards. 
as heat and drought snatch away the melted snow, so the grave snatches away those who have sinned. The womb forgets them, the worm feasts on them. The wicked are no longer remembered, but are broken like a tree. They prey on the barren and childless woman, and to the widow they show no kindness. But God drags away the might. <laughs> but God drags away the mighty by his power, and though they become established, they have no assurance of life. He may let them rest in a feeling of security, but his eyes are on their ways. For a little while they are exiled, and then they are gone. They are brought low and gathered up like all others. They are cut off like heads of fame. If this is not so, who can prove me false and reduce my words to nothing? That was Job 22 through 24. And now we will be turning to Acts 11. Peter explains his actions. Acts 11. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the words of God. And so when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went in to the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. It was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in the trances, I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four footed animals on the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds, and then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, chill, and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord, nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then and there, three men who had been sent to me from Kereskara stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. The six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on me and them as he had come on us at the beginning. And then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So it goes. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When he, they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even the Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. The church in Antioch. Now, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia. Cyprus and Antioch spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, 
men from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Teresa to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, as each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. And that was Acts 11, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2023 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Job 23, uh, or sorry, 25 through 27, and Acts 12. Father, I just have to thank you for your word, because if it were not for your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2023 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow, because God will and will be here. And we hope that you are too. Please like and share.